Hey, what's up, bros? Welcome back to another Pokemon Masters video. Today, we are talking about the skill gears. Uh, we're going to talk about where to get them, how they work, and how, they how to use them. I've seen a lot of people asking what these new gears are, and that's why I decided to make this video. So typically, the way to get it is under exchange items, and it's going to be a monthly thing. You can get these uh, gears, skill gears here and you can get up to five per month you can get also a thing called an ever pin you can only get one of that a month and it costs you 20 tickets and if you can afford it it is relatively important to have that ever pin and it's a very limited item but i would say if you need 20 tickets for like a unit to upgrade that's probably worth more than the ever pin itself it's really for the end game players at this stage somewhere to really dump their tickets now, currently you can also get it under events. So there is a event specifically tailored to this new item. Uh, it's running for two weeks and under there, as you do the missions here, uh, the stages here, you'll be able to get them as rewards. And it seems like you're gonna need quite a few of these because you'll want a wide variety of stats. And it also looks like in the future, we'll be able to get them in regular events as well. So for example, the latest event together in an unknown land it already incorporates some of these skill gears and also feathers which is another uh, uh, new item relating to the gears so if we go to the exchange item tab here now these feathers are specifically tailored to the unit that this stage is related to so for example if we actually go to this special skill feather one and see what it actually unlocks you'll see that the themes are matched to the current spotlight or current pokey fair unit. Uh, so the current one is Akari and Samura, which is a dark Sinnoh main character themed unit. And you'll see the, the additional effects are tailored to that unit. So you get crit moves, dark sync moves, power up and dark zone moves also powered up. And on top, on top of that, uh, you'll also get some base stat improvement. Now you can't actually equip the feather. So what the feather does is it applies a certain stat uh, or those stats to your one of your gears. Special feathers will give you guaranteed skills into the gears, whereas uh, other feathers will give you other stuff. So <clears throat> with the green skill feathers and the yellow skill feathers, and it's my understanding that green is higher tier than yellow, Having said that, you can actually see what they unlock as well. Now, for these feathers, they're not guaranteed. So you're going to get something in that range for the regular stat boost. Uh, and in the themes, it looks empty. But the reason why it's empty is because I have actually, haven't actually unlocked much uh, or anything at all for the green one. But I have actually done so for the yellow. So I'll just show you my yellow list. So what it does is it picks from this list a random number of themes and additional effects. The reason why they're not showing up is because I have not yet unlocked them. The game actually tells you that you can't see them until you've actually unlocked them. Now I'll get to how they actually work in a moment, but I'll just show you again. You see a huge list here. So I've got one uh, additional effect unlocked there, but you see this huge list of like different effects that it can pull from. And it makes sense because this game has a lot of different stats and types and, you know, things that it can buff. So, for example, it could, uh, if, you're, if your feather gives your gear one of these, then what happens is your gear will then provide a 1% improvement or damage increase to your sync moves, special sync moves. All right, let's get on to the actual... Uh, upgrading of the gears just so you can see what it actually does now i've used three feathers on three gears already just to test it out and you can see i've got some extra ones down here as well i haven't unlocked any of the skills so what i've done first here is just equip my first three gears and you'll see that none of my units are getting any buffs at all and the reason that is is that skill gears require that you have at least one of these themes being matched so this theme isn't a stat boost this theme is just something that you have to match so the more themes you have the better because you have more chances to match so, and i'll show you by equipping 
one rock type unit so that it matches the rock theme and one Sinnoh unit so it matches the Sinnoh theme. So I've equipped one rock unit now and you can see the stat buff is being applied. And the rest of the additional effects will also now apply because of this. That means if my unit has a special sync move and we can see the effect by actually clicking into the gear by clicking here. So this will power up special sync moves by 1% damage. Now I'm going to say that a lot of rock units are actually physical types. So this combination of rock and special sync move doesn't make too much sense to me. So that's a skill um, gear that I might want to reroll with a feather. On the other hand, the sandstorm moves up 3% makes a lot of sense for rock type units. So that's actually not a bad idea at all. Uh, so to have rock and sandstorm. Uh, burned units, so for example, here it powers up my moves. If the opponents are burned, that means I'll need to run a burn unit on my team in order to maximize the effect of skill gears. And as you can see that these percentages are quite small, it's not like a multiplier effect from a sync grid. It's really reserved for the really end game players. If you haven't even learned how to use lucky skills and sync grids, don't bother with the skill gears just yet. Farm the materials by all means, but it is not the priority. This is not beginner friendly. And then you can see opponents if trapped, look, there, there are some units that can also do that. So for example, if I run Blaine and Rapidash, I could maybe do trapped, but then I'm more of a fire team rather than a rock team. So it, the, the themes cannot, uh, the themes and the additional effects may not make sense. And that is why we have feathers. It's kind of like lucky skills. We need to re-roll them, but in the case where I might like one of the skills, so for example, uh, I really want to keep this skill. Uh, I don't actually know why this skill is orange. Maybe it's a rarer skill. I can actually press this little lock button and prevent it from being rolled away when I use the feather. Unfortunately, it will cost you one of these pins, which are very expensive, very rare. That costed me 20 gold tickets to get one. So I would really think about what I need before I use one of these. I've just changed my unit to someone who is a Sinnoh unit. And you can see that because it matches one of the themes, then this stat gets applied. So the 80 and 30 gets applied there and there. And it will also get poison zone moves up 2% and special move damage reduction 2%. If you don't know what the abbreviations mean, again, just click into the, the gear and it'll tell you. Reduces damage from special attack moves by 2%. That's actually not a bad thing. Um, any unit can use that. Very generally good um, skill uh, additional effect to have. But poison zone 2% up? That almost makes no sense with my current team. Heck, there aren't even that many units that can do poison zone. And this is a Unova unit. So once again, these these stats are not making too much sense to the or to to any team that I could make, which is why you're going to need a lot of feathers to keep re-rolling these stats, these additional effects, and these theme skills. And then once you find a good one, you're going to need one or two ever pins to hold on to them until, as you keep re-rolling. To me, this is one massive headache to deal with, and a very costly one at that. Thankfully, the game gives us one ability or one chance with the event to get the correct feather. So these are called special feathers corresponding to the unit that's currently in the banner. So the Pokefair, Samurott and Akari right now has a specific feather called Special Skill Feather 1. And Ray's going to get Special Skill Feather 2 where these unlock exactly the stuff that you need. So the themes are correct. Uh, and the additional effects are what you need for that unit. So I'm going to uh, exchange for this now. So where you can, this is what you should be using. And I'll just grab these as well. And let's get some green feathers. Unfortunately, this is where things are going to suck a little bit more. 
Because with one skill feather that we were given, one special skill feather, I'm going to now have to choose whether I want it on the bandana, the pin, or the bracelet. And you really got to think carefully here because, for example, my Samurott is a physical attacker. Don't go unlocking special attack. So the bandana for Samurott. So in other words, if you don't know what you're doing yet, don't go wasting all your feathers. Just exchange all of them until you understand what you're doing before you go exchanging for these skills. I'm, I'm going to say that HP and speed are not as useful in any damage units. So what I'm going to go for here is I'm going to put that skill fe uh, the special skill feather into bracelet. These are not considerations I've ever had to do for gears before until now. So I double check that that's a bracelet. You can see that's bracelet. I double check that that's what I want. So again, uh, bracelet. Yeah, bracelet is the one that gives, gives attack. The themes are going to be the same no matter whether it's bracelet or, or bandana or, or pin. Uh, additional effects are going to be the same as well. So the choice of which gear to put it on is purely based on which stat you want to increase in this list here. All right, so let's go ahead and put that on the bracelet and you will see that it will tell you what you get straight away, which is what we expected. So you can see the stats are exactly reflected as the game described before. Gear details, yep, so that's that's all correct. We've got three themes, two base stats, and three additional effects. All of which are tailored to the current unit in the banner. Because it's a special feather. I'm gonna press OK. So for Samurott in this in this in this Stark team that I'm gonna make now, so this is my one of my dark teams. In order to maximally utilize the skill bracelet, so my normal dark bracelets and gears will give this kind of stat increase. And now we're going to change them out to our new bracelet that we just made. So we're going to put that in. I've equipped other skill gears as well, just to show you. So that you only need to match one theme. So for example, dark is matched here. So they all get plus 60 plus 20 on the attack and, and defense. And they will all get these additional effects. Now the second gear here is actually doing absolutely nothing. Because none of my units are rock and psychic. So in this case, I will switch back to a normal dark gear to get benefits. And... While this one does match and give 80 and 30 to HP, HP and speed, it only matches to two of my units, which are Sinnoh. So that's Cyrus and Akari. And the additional effects aren't that good. But 80, 30 is higher than 70, 20 for what I would normally get from a dark three star type gear. It's just that it's not being applied to my central unit here because it's missing the Sinnoh theme. So it's not harmful to keep this one on, uh, but I could easily just switch back to my, again, my dark gear so that at least all three units can benefit. Now, what's going to be really annoying from here on out is that it seems like these skill gears are tailored to very, very specific units. I mean, you saw before, before that one of the skills is Poison Zone Damage Up. There's only like one or maybe two units that can do Poison Zone. So the annoying thing is, previously we could just set a team. So we have a preset team where we just, we just ran, you know, Dark Type Gears with the Dark Type Team. Now, to optimize gears, you're going to have to pick out the correct one for the correct unit every time your team changes. And to me, knowing all of this feels like it's one of the worst implementations that this game has ever made. It's way too much effort. There are way too many skills. And the RNG to roll the right stuff 
is crazy if you didn't have the spe special feathers. And then if I decide that I want to change this dark team, I want to use another dark unit instead of Akari. Let's say I want to use Galarian Moltres. All of a sudden, this first bracelet is less useful. My apologies, it's still quite useful because it's still dark type. And, uh, you know, I still get dark zone from Cyrus. Uh, so it's still going to be useful, but if I had swapped out Cyrus and I don't have Dark Zone, you can see, basically my point is that this is tailored to Akari. There are some units that, other units that can still use it. But if this was Poison Zone instead, there's really no other units that could use it. So you have to keep changing gears to fit the stage. So for beginners, don't worry too much about this. This is something that you only care about if you're really, really into the game and really want to see that extra bit of damage on your unit. Most of this game should be clearable without having to worry about skill gears. And that's all I have to say for today. Thank you for watching, guys. If this video helped you, please leave a like and subscribe. If you think this video can help someone else who has no idea what skill gears are, please share with them. If you have any more questions, you're welcome to use the comment section down below. If I left anything out, you can also use the comment section down below. I also have a Discord, so come over to our Discord. I'll leave a link in the description below if you want to chat.